It's a nice assortment of figures here. Some of these here, are probably five or ten bucks a, a piece. Here's some from a Lionel train set, the winter sports set. They're skiers, sledders, toboggans, the whole works. I wish I had the toboggan, but. So it's that time of the year. I do have a schedule that we keep. I've got a ton of toy soldiers. Now, some of these date to probably the circa 1910-ish uh, on up. Most of these I don't think are any older than like 1950s or 60s at the latest. Now, I like to have all my toys up, honestly, all the vintage stuff that I've been buying for the last few months up by the end of September. September is usually when my winter toy buyers start to come in, so I am sorting through these. Now, lots of these people aren't aware of. They don't have a clue on what they are. Now, these are called flats. You can see why they're called flats. And this is Heinrichsen. This is the maker of this, Hans Heinrichsen. These date to the 1920s. They're marked, let me see, I think this one, you might be able to see a better mark on it. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see the marks, but it is actually marked with an H and an H for Hans Heinrichsen. These sell for like 20 bucks a piece or better. So these are honestly, considering that they're tiny, small, and you can see my hand in here, these are really small, they're still worth really good money. So these are something I always nab up. Um, early Britons and things like that, bar clay, World War I type soldiers, World War II type soldiers. Here is a Girl Scout leader. This one's probably an early Britons, Britons, however they want to pronounce it. Some of these are as well. Nice red coat from the Revolutionary War era. That's what it's supposed to be. There's a Bobby. There's some, I guess they're Moroccan soldiers, a uh, French one. Now, even if these are damaged, I still do incredibly well with them. Now, you can see some of the horse and riders here. They're quite detailed. They have a ton of detail on them. Excellent pieces, without a doubt. Um, I do extremely well, even with these lots, even if it's just like mixed lots of these. There's a nice early French one. Again, some of these date way back. Some of these are early Britons. Uh, some of these, again, are damaged. There's a fox hunting one. Here's a knight, or actually it looks like somebody was trying to make something out of that one. Here's an interesting one, again, damaged. Looks like some sort of French soldier, maybe. Not really sure. Maybe it is a British, but anyway. It's a nice assortment of figures here. Some of these here are probably five or ten bucks a, a piece. Here's some from a Lionel train set, the winner sports set. They're skiers, sledders, toboggans, the whole works. I wish I had the toboggan, but the people are pretty scarce as well. This one goes with it as well. also. Now, I sort them by size. Size matters. These are tiny little lead ones that were painted, probably HO scale, and then they work themselves up in scale-wise, like Lionel full-size ones, and then through these, like uh, similar to some of the Mark size ones. Now, they made flats of all sorts of different things. Here's some flats, and I guess these are U.S. soldiers is what it looks like. Could be wrong. It's hard to tell. Now, I always used to wonder when I first ran into these, are these original? Is the paint original? They look too good to be true. Believe it or not, they show up fairly often in decent condition. I mean, I run into them fairly often in decent condition. Sometimes I run into ones from kits that they would have molded themselves. Some of these are actually professional uh, ones also, but for the most part, I think these are from kits that you would have uh, poured your own. Now, these figures here are from train sets. They're from Lionel, mostly. Um, there's a difference between these two. Even though they look the same, they're constructed basically the same. These are marked Italy, and these are made by a group or a company named Putz, P-U-T-Z. And these are Elastiline ones here made in uh, Germany. And there's German marks on some of them, too. It'll say Germany and stuff like that. So there's a difference between those. Um, these over here are Trico, and these will be marked Japan. As you can see, they're early, uh, 1920s or 30s. 
now these are, are made like almost by hand. There's a wire frame on here and someone would put a composition material, I think, in a mold and then smash them together. And what you'll see sometimes is they're not the exact same size, even though it's basically the same character right here. As well with these, they're from two different eras. This one's probably a little older than this one here, uh, but they do break, they do have issues. This one here is a good example. You should be able to see the leg. There's a wire in there and uh, you can repair these. These are repairable. People will repair them and paint them. Even these figures here, like this one here, I can get 20 bucks for this one, even more than that, because of the condition, 20, 24 bucks. Here's another example to give you an idea on how different each one can be. This head's a little thinner than this head. The hat's a little different than this one, but they're the same Pretty much exact same one. It just depends on how they stuff them, um, stuff the molds with the composition material. But again, they're broken, but they stay together because there's a wire frame. And for that same reason, you could fill those in. Some people use gesso, for example, to fill those in, and they'll just touch up the paint. These are not hard to repair, and they do sell for some pretty darn good money. Uh, so these are pretty interesting. This one's in excellent condition, and this one has some issues. Here's the Porter. Again, these are from a train set. Lionel train sets, basically, you'd find these on. You could buy them in lots, uh, like a city section, um, engineers, train personnel. Uh, here's another, I guess that would be a train police. Yeah, he's supposed to have a gun on him there. So it's a basically, it would be at the train station. These are train station types. Um, you're going to run into all sorts. I picked up a whole bunch of these sorts, and these are German ones. And these are like semi-flats, I guess I would call them. Um, interesting. I still haven't found out for sure if these are authentic original ones on this set here, because this would be like a parade set of figures. Um, this helmet style, most of you, if you collect military, would probably recognize. They do appear to be original, which I'm really surprised. Um, these are fairly scarce. Now, this is a 20-piece band set. It needs to be fixed. Get All these can be fixed. You just melt a little metal. If you're careful, you can mount the pieces back together. There's a million ways people will fix these up. Like this one here, it has a bend there. The base is a little curled up. Uh, this is fixable as well. This thing's weighs a ton. So this is all heavyweight material. This box here probably weighs three or four pounds, believe it or not. There's always money in these sorts of toys. Uh, like even this one here, this is an early. Uh, this is kind of like the idea where flats would have come from. This is probably turn of the century, 1905, maybe 1910. And it's a German soldier made in Germany and it's a thin piece, what would be called a cardboard flat, basically. Um, some of the cows and stuff, animals alone, like this is a Britain's, the, the sheep is a Britain's, and then this is a U.S. hollow cast. Now, this one could have come from, say, geez, let's see, how's it marked? Just made in USA, it looks like. This one could have been in a manger scene. You'll find these mixed up all together as well. Um, that's usually what happens. I'll have to go through them. I'll sort them. Some items don't even really belong in here. Like this one is like a, a cheapo table model or something. It does not belong with toy soldiers at all. It's just a cheapo model. So this one, though, does. This one's the carriage to one, but it's missing the, the firing cannon part itself. This one is actually marked. And this one... I can't make out without my loop. So I'll have to just look at this one. This one might be a newer one. It's hard to tell. Uh, if the wheels rolled, usually they're a better brand. This one looks like the wheels should roll, but maybe they have paint on them. Uh, fishermen here. You've got city men, Alps climbers. So uh, just be on the lookout for this stuff. A single figure from some of these sets can go for a couple hundred bucks. A single figure. Uh, size means a lot. Again, even if they're damaged, this set here, you could sell. Somebody could take apart some of these and actually reconstruct a couple of the horses. Um, this one has its head, so there are pieces here. He's just missing some feet. Painting these is fairly straightforward. There are some pros out there that you can send stuff to like this, and they'll fix them for you. Now, why would somebody want to mess with an older one like this also? Well, 
there are the first issues of some of these basically it's the first representation in some cases that that um the companies did like britons or something like that the the major company so again you have to split these up you sell them individually like right here as i said these are 20 bucks a piece or so this is about a hundred bucks just in these five ones here this grouping here and the sailors he has his head and one's missing there it may still be in a box somewhere but um a set like this might get you 35 or 40 bucks 35 or 40 bucks this one figure here she might go for 25 30 40 50 60 bucks a red coat i might get 10 15 20 bucks again or i might throw this lot together right here and get 15 20 30 40 bucks for them this set here these go for 20 or 30 bucks the horse set here uh, maybe 50 bucks if i throw all of these in here maybe more than that they all need a little bit of work but again that's what you expect with some of these the whole point is they don't make these anymore they haven't in 60 70 years some of these versions of them and when they make a newer version sometimes they change the design so the only way to get stuff that you may want is to find one of these versions of it now this is just a touch on what we're doing today i've got somebody else photographing a whole bunch we already sorted through this is the second batch i've got two or three more batches of vintage toys tanks marks plastic figures and things like that probably around 125 135 lots worth of just this type of stuff they were bought in massive bulk i don't have hardly anything into them i've already sold some items out of this purchase the best stuff and i've already got a ton of money out of it with just the stuff i showed you here geez there's six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars maybe maybe more than that some of the german ones i figure might go for a few hundred dollars all on their own if i again piece these out the ones that are in excellent condition 20 25 a piece the broken ones go into a lot i can split the lots up into five or six figures at a time um the musician set might get me 125 at best somewhere probably between 75 and 125 just the box of unpainted ones might go for 40 or 50 bucks so there's a lot of money in stuff like this, and we do make a lot of money from stuff like this. But again, you have to know a little bit about them to know brand names, to know construction, whether they're composition or something. There's some that are uh, compressed wood. There are some that are made out of rubber, lead, uh, modern day white metal, which would be more of a pewter line um, without lead in it as well, the newer ones. So there's a bunch of different varieties versions. Size has a lot to do with it as well. So when you're listing these, you always have to list the size of the figures because as I showed you with like the train train folks there, there's like eight different sizes of train uh, citizenship of people that would go on there. There's standard sizes, H, O, Z, N, Line L, and a bunch of other different gauges of model trains. But anyway, that's just a touch on what we got going on today. Hopefully everybody is listing. Hopefully you're not letting anything bother you and sticking heavy on this. Keep listing in uh, end of August. Again, we're going to be back to a, a normal state, I would hope, for everybody. Uh, this week right here with 4th of July could be extremely slow. It usually is. The week before and the week after 4th of July usually is slow. People are out. They're having fun. There's events, concerts, shows, and things like that with the pandemic. People aren't going to be looking at their phone as much. So just keep that in mind. Don't panic. August, end of August is usually when we want all of the good stuff up because that's when all the winter pickers start to fly out for us. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
through Secret Sam's periscope. You see him, but he can see you. You locate the master spy. You talk to him. And Secret Sam's hidden camera is taking his picture right now. Suddenly you're discovered. Secret Sam fires bullets from inside the case. Secret Sam has barrel extension. Special missile sends message to your partner. Mission accomplished. You hand over real photograph. Secret Sam with periscope, message missile, rifle stock, barrel extension, even shoots through this carrying case. And this real camera that works in secretly or out takes real photos. Secret Sam.